Well, hello, hello. Hello there, ladies. Good afternoon. Happy Sunday. I know that it's been a minute since I've been on, um, but I just thought I would pop on and say hello and check in with everyone and kind of get myself together a little bit and sort of talk about that a little bit as well. Um, so I haven't intentionally been like social media quiet, but I just kind of felt like is, is the things that I normally share in this group, is that even important right now? Like is, you know, like I like to get on and talk about what I'm cooking for dinner, like what the kids are up to, if I've got like a nifty little time-saving tip or sometimes I'll do my makeup on here. And I just sort of was feeling like you're, we're seeing so much on social media right now. And I know in the beginning of all this, you know, some of the things I was seeing, I'm like, oh my gosh, like it's inaccurate or it's slightly offensive or, and I just felt like I was sort of like tiptoeing around, you know, what is what I have to share important. But then I was like, you know what? It is important because you have to do what makes you feel good to get through times like this. And so I was sort of reflecting and there have been other times in my life where I have felt stuck. Um both physically and mentally. I think we all have times like that, but I'm gonna specifically uh, speak about when I was like physically stuck a couple times. And one that definitely comes to mind is when I was pregnant with the quintuplets and I had to go in the hospital on bed rest and I had to lay flat in a bed for five weeks. And actually at the time I was admitted, um, we knew that I would be admitted early. You know, we knew that I would spend some time in the hospital, but I guess in my mind, I just didn't know exactly what that was going to look like until it happened. And then when it happened, it just rocked my world because it happened way sooner than we were expecting. I was only about 19 weeks pregnant at the time, but I was already measuring over 40 weeks. So my body was totally uncomfortable. And unfortunately I was contracting enough that I had started dilating. So I was basically sentenced to bed and oh, my phone's going to fall. And I mean, bed like I had to uh, lay flat I was allowed to elevate my head a little bit when I ate um, in the beginning when things were really touch and go this is probably way too TMI but I had to go to the bathroom in a bedpan I wasn't allowed to you know I could like basically take a wash rag bath and I was on uh, mag magnesium sulfate which does a good job at stopping labor from progressing but it has all kinds of terrible side effects, so I was not feeling well, to say the least. And initially, I felt like I was doing okay with that, um, because I'm like, you know, this is what I have to do. And then I remember around the one week point, my nurse preparing me, one of my main nurses telling me like, be prepared, you're probably gonna have a little breakdown around a week. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm okay, I'm not really much of a crier, it's okay, I know what I'm doing is important right here, and I'm telling you what about a week point, felt like I was losing my mind because it felt like the whole world was continuing around me and I was stuck in the hospital. But what I found was if you can just sort of mentally flip the script and find things that make you feel good, it makes the time pass a lot, I don't want to say easier, I don't know what word, better, I'm not sure. But um, I would sort of focus on certain things of the day. And now that we're in this situation where we are stuck at home, I hate to even say stuck, we get to be home, most of us. Um, I know my husband and I both work in healthcare, so we are still leaving to go to our jobs and coming home, but we get to, we, there's nothing else. There's no other distractions. There's no other sports practices, which is sad for us because we love baseball season and it's really been hard for um, my boys, especially my 14 year old. I think he's taking this um, quarantine time really rough because he, this is a social time in his life. I mean, think about eighth grade. Like he just wants to hang out with his friends. He doesn't understand why he can't hang out with his friends. So it's been rough, but I feel like we've got a week under our belts and everybody's starting to feel better. And what I've been focusing on is what I had to focus on when I was in the hospital as well. 
So, like, when I was in the hospital, I had to, like, kind of break my day up by, like, when I got to eat. So I'd be like, oh, I know breakfast comes at 8 o'clock. And then maybe there was, like, a show I would watch or listen to at 9. And maybe I knew, you know, that there was something, something, just something to look forward to. And another thing that was really important is just taking day by day. And after a while, those days are really slow, but the time does pass quickly. And then it happened to us again when we brought the babies home. So after being in the hospital for all that time, and then the, the babies were in the NICU from August until the end of November, um, then once we got home, we were locked down at home with them, and we didn't go anywhere. The only place that we went was to the pediatrician when we first brought them home. And um, again, we brought them home in November. Our very first outing, like true outing was we went to my cousin's house um, for Easter that year. But again, how I broke up the day was I, I hate to say schedule because some people just don't like a schedule, but you kind of just break it up in highlights or chunks of your day. And again, that seemed to kind of roll around Feed, feeding the baby times, you know, like if there was a nap time, we always, always went for a walk. I was lucky enough to have a five-seater stroller that honestly was my freedom um, because that's the only thing that I could do with the kids by my, like that I was able to do by myself other than sitting inside the house. So I was able to like put them all in a stroller and go for a walk. So we've been doing the same things this week at the Spagochi house. Um, we're trying to uh, enjoy meal times. Like our school is going to start, like our teachers are going to start some online schooling this Monday. I know some of you have already started. Some of you are on spring break, so that doesn't start for a while, but we sort of t laid low this week. I did have a little bit of a routine, but not very much. Um, but the things that I did focus on were like meal times, definitely, definitely going outside times, and then like getting up and brushing your teeth, brushing your hair, getting dressed, um, and for everybody, that looks different. So I'm not saying like my routine is going to work for everybody, but I just really encourage you to find what makes you feel good and do that. And one of the things that makes me feel good is getting my makeup on. And I know that everybody's different. So I know my sister-in-law, we were talking about this last summer when they were home visiting from Hong Kong. And she's like, I feel like I'm more productive when I'm like in my like workout clothes and I have a messy bun and I haven't done my hair or my makeup. And I'm like, Really? Because if I do that, I get like I don't use my workout. I don't use yoga pants for yoga, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> that just means like uh, chill out. Like if I have sloppy clothes on, um, to me that means like veg out today, do nothing. See, Kristen knows. She said yes. It's for your mental health. This That is exactly what this is all about. That's what I wanted everybody to share is like, what are you doing to like mentally flip the script in your mind and make yourself feel better? Um, and for me, it's getting up. Now we have, I have not like set an alarm. I, I'm a nurse. I work at the hospital. I've worked two evenings this week. Um, my husband works a 24 hour shift. So I have not set an alarm for myself and my kids. I've kind of been this week letting us wake up like whenever we wake up. And then I have my coffee and they eat. But then at a certain time, I'm like, okay, troops, guess what? You need to go get some clothes on. You need to brush your hair. You need to brush your teeth. I want you to make your bed. Um, and that, even making the beds, that's not something I normally make my kids do on a school day, but it just, is enough to kind of like give us some focus and it just it just makes me feel good. So, listen, Nikki has to put on makeup and jeans. I have I have a hoodie on. I have a really comfy hoodie on today, but I have some jeans on today and you're right. That means business. Um and so I just wanted to see what's everybody doing for the mental health and I thought, well, while I'm on and I know it's late in the day, like I did get up and I did like kind of do everything, but I just haven't put my makeup on yet and I just have kind of like been feeling like blah like I don't know I just I've caught myself in the mirror a couple times and I'm like oh girl go put some makeup on you know that makes you feel good go do that and so I'm just gonna do uh, just totally simple makeup while we're talking um I sort of made up my little palette today in this one little box 
of, sorry for the sun glare, of what I'm going to wear. Um, I love this makeup because it's Mascara Beauty for anybody that doesn't know. Um, I love it because it's very easy, it's very affordable, and it lasts a long time. And I think that those are some things that are really important during this time. Even us thinking about like foods and like dinners that I'm making, stuff that you can kind of like either eat the leftovers or roll it over. Sometimes I like to make one thing that can kind of like turn into something else the next day. Um, like if you make a roast and then maybe like the next day or two you make like vegetable beef soup or if you make something with chicken and then maybe you can use the leftover chicken to make chicken pot pie. I know sometimes we'll make like homemade Alfredo and chicken and then we might do like our own homemade pizzas and we can use that sausage. Like I just like doing that. So kind of the same thing with the makeup. Easy, last a long time, it's affordable. Um, this is gonna be my palette today. These right here are my highlight colors that I'm gonna be using. Um, this, whoop, this is my contour color, it's called Astoria. I do love bronzer, so this is my Bella bronzer. I'm gonna use this on my cheeks and my lips and then I just stuck some eyeshadows in there kind of for what I have on. But you can also use, sometimes I will use my lip and cheek color on my eyes as well. So, and I'm also gonna just use um, my blush and bronzer brush. So I'm gonna use one brush um, for my entire face. I did pull out my little eyebrow brush too. And um, then I have a, I don't know what I'll do with my lips. I don't know if I'll use my lip and cheek color or I also have this color stay, this really cheap. I got this on Amazon. I think it's made by Maybelline. Um, Super Stay Matte Ink. I don't even know what color this is. Lover. It's called Lover. It's a pretty pink. Um, but I thought that I would just do this. Hey, Amber, gotta go. Sending our love to you, Amber. Um, so anyway, let's see, what did I throw in here today? Um, tell me, while I'm gonna put on a little bit of makeup, what have you been doing that's making you stay sane this week? Please share with me. Um, one of the things, like I said, I haven't done a hardcore school schedule with my kids this week, um, but we have done like some reading, um, we've done a little bit of math. Oh, you love when I use my bronzer, Nikki, don't you worry, I have to use my bronzer. Oh, Kristen, you, lo you love the super stay? Okay, so I never have like tried to take it off, tell me. Like I will just let it wear off all day. And then by the time I like wash my face at night, it's gone. Have you like had to try to take it off like you wanna switch your lip color and you can't get it off? I don't know what would take that off. Maybe a makeup wipe, I'm not sure. And then, Kristen, I'm curious what color you love because your makeup always looks beautiful. So tell me. Um, so my kids, are, I, hear do, I hear a door, but my kids are supposed to be outside. Vince took them outside and I told him I would join them in a little bit, but I just wanted to do my makeup. Um, so if this was a school day, this is mom's recess. <laughs> Kayla's marking herself safe from her job. <laughs> Oh, Kayla, I hear you. I hear you. For anybody that has not watched me do this makeup before, I just go um, basically anywhere that I want to cover things up. So I go like down my nose. I do my eyelids because I have dark eyelids. Um, I was dabbing mango under my eyes because that's a great color corrector um, for dark circles and... I have really bad dark circles. Um, but then what I'm doing is I'm putting Sandy everywhere else. So the only place I'm not putting it is right here because that's where I'm gonna put my contour and my cheek color. Um, and that just saves on makeup. You don't have to put your makeup all over your entire face. You just put it where you, the color is where you want them. And it's super quick and simple. And I love it. And I also have had um, some lovely breakouts this week. Probably, I don't know, stress something like that. So I'm just going to use my highlight colors and dab and then do this. Kristen, your stays on that long? Wow, that's amazing, that's crazy. And again, tell me what color you use because your makeup always looks so beautiful. I'd love to know. Okay, so that is my highlight color. Then I'm going to um, I'm going to I'm going to use my finger to put my contour on because I'm trying to be simple. I do have a different brush that I use sometimes, but I'm just going to use my finger and I go from the top of my ear and just kind of come down under my cheekbone like this. 
Hey, Nicole. How are you guys doing? You know, you have older kids. I just have one older kiddo at home. How are these, how are your older kids, kiddos handling this? Oh, and congratulations. You're gonna welcome a grandbaby into your family this year too. Taylor, you know, Taylor's um, due at the end of August. So exciting. That's another thing. I'm trying to help my kids focus on things to look forward to. What can we look forward to? Okay, so let's see. Go a little bit darker right here. Anyway, I think I was saying before I got distracted, I go from the top of my ear, just under my cheekbone, and I usually start where like stop where the color of my eye starts, just right there. Um, and I'm also going to dab some across the very top of my forehead. And I'll probably put some just under my jawline and then I'll blend it. So if you're like, oh, this is not looking good. She does not know what she's doing. Yeah, that's true. I don't know what I'm doing, but you don't know, have to know what you're doing with this makeup. Um, but it works out in the end. I promise. So I'm, I'm just f literally just following my jawline and then I'm going to blend it. Nikki, can't wait for the baby. Aw, can't wake up the next morning. A lip scrub. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Kristen, you must have like very porous lips. They must like hold the color. Mine do not. I mean, it does, it'll last, but it doesn't, nothing like that. Okay, so I take the bigger end of my um, brush and I cannot talk. I need coffee, guys. Blush and bronzer brush, the bigger end. I This is the Bella bronzer right here. I've had this since summer. I've had this since July. All this. Do you see these colors? July. So you can see how long this lasts you. Forever. And I take the big end of my brush and I literally just like swirl it. And I use my bronzer to not only warm up my face, but to blend in my contour as well. So just like that, kind of help blend in this contour that I dabbed on my forehead. Again, just swirling in my Bella. Um, oh, another thing we did this week that my kids love. So we live, we live out a ways, which I don't, I don't know how, I don't know what everybody's doing that lives in a neighborhood and I'm I'm not here to judge or whatever. I do think you should try to stay away from as many people as you can, but I can imagine if you lived like in a cul-de-sac or something, that would be so hard because the kids would want to play together. Um, but we live on a dead end road and we're kind of out of ways surrounded by cornfield. And so there's just a few houses on our road out in no man's land, which I, I like. So I had my kids, we, um, have enough neighbors that my kids were able to just draw names. Like I put all of my neighbors' names on a piece of paper to avoid fighting because they would fight over that kind of thing. And then they each drew a name and I had them either make a picture or a card. And then that also prompted an outside activity because then they went to their houses and put the picture or the card in their mailbox. And we got a lot of good feedback. I got a lot of text messages of our neighbors that said that that really made their day. And, um... One of our neighbors, you know, she's a little bit older and she lives by herself. And I think about that. So like on the days that I'm like, oh, these kids, I just want them to be quiet. They need to go do something. They're making me crazy. I also think about the people that literally live alone and that would be really sad. Um, and so we're just trying to brighten up those people that are living alone. And like my niece is an only child. And so we've been doing a lot of FaceTime stuff with her and kind of like, playing with her on FaceTime. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of give my brows some shape and I'm going to use my contour color, um, that Astoria that I use to go on my cheeks to kind of just define my cheekbones. And I'm just going to use it to sort of um, follow the natural shape of my eyebrow and just sort of define it a little bit. I don't have great brows. They're sort of like flat. But if I just, uh-oh, I hear some maybe fighting out there. If I just kind of follow where the natural arch is, and I have talked about this before, like how if you want to be technical, but I'm not going to be technical, how I sort of like map out my brows, where they should end, where they should start. Maybe I'll share that again sometime this week. Just do a short video about brows. Um, and I can hear Gia. Open the door. Somebody's not letting her in their bedroom. The girls, the girls dorm. Okay.
Okay, so that's that. That's going to be that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put some cheek color on and some lip color on. So I'm actually going to use my eyeshadow um, brush and actually um, I'm going to dip it in my contour color again and sort of line my lips. It's another thing I love just how um, you can use this makeup for so there's so many uses for one thing. So yes, it's called a contour color, but if you're desperate, you could use it on your lips, you could use it on your eyes, you could line your eyes with it. Uh, thanks, Nikki. Nikki, you sort of inspired me to get on. You know, I was really struggling. I'm like, is this even important? But you know what? Our sanity is so important. And then I'm gonna top it with, um, this is a newer lip color that I have and I really like it. It's a cheek color. Here, let me dab it on my cheeks first so you, I can scare you. It's called Black Cherry. And it looks really dark right now. Um, but when I blend it, you'll see how pretty it is. I'm not going to leave it like that, but hold on. So I did the contour on my lips first. And then I did the Black Cherry over top. And it's just a really pretty combination. Nikki, I know you don't have this color. I recommend it. I love it. Okay. So I'm just going to take it and then just sort of blend it. And it's just, hey, Brooke, how are you? It's good to see all of you. See, this is good. This is good for everybody. And you know what else? We, um, Nikki and um, another friend that I've, I've not met in person, but it's a good friend of Nikki's. And so I've met her through Nikki just through like texting and, um, social media and stuff. We did a Zoom last night just for fun, like just for practice. And actually it was good practice because Nikki and I might have to use it for work um, to teach our upcoming like child, the childbirth and breastfeeding. We teach the breastfeeding classes um, and we might have to use Zoom for that because we can't hold our classes. And um, it was so easy. So we decided we're going to have a, um, we scheduled like next Sunday morning, we are going to get together and on Zoom with our coffee and kind of have like a mom's time. That's another thing I recommend, like figure out a way that you can still kind of, um, you know, have your, have your me time too. And my friends are a big part of that. I always say I can't mom without these ladies. Like I need them. I need to talk to them. I need to vent to them. I need to celebrate with them. Um, what's this light pink color called, Nikki? Mama? Lullaby? I think it might be Mama. I don't know. I'm just using the same pink color that sort of matches my shirt and I'm just kind of like dabbing it in the corners of my eye just for some color. Um, what else was I going to tell you ladies about? Oh, another thing that sometimes I have to do, and I actually would do this a lot when the kids were younger, um, when I knew that Vince was in charge and I could just like check out and it would help so I wouldn't hear them, is get in the bath, get in the shower, the bath. Um, find what works for you. I am not, I think I've talked about this before and this is one of the, this is a flaw. I'm gonna admit a flaw. I am not somebody who works out. I wish that I liked it, I hate it. I always say I'm going to do something and I don't. Because I just don't like it. It's lullaby. Thanks, Nikki. Um, and then I put cupcake, that lighter color, in the corner, in the inner corner of my eye. Just kind of like brighten it up a little bit. Anyway, another thing that I've definitely done this week every day, even when I didn't want to, even when it was cold, I will use the temperature as an excuse. Oh, I have to move. My feet are falling asleep. Um, I've gone out. We've gone outside. I told you I've sent my kids outside, but I have also gone outside and gone for a walk or just something even if I'm like outside kind of like sweeping off the front porch but especially just like moving your body and today the sun is shining even though it's a little bit chilly I think it's a good day to get out of course practice your social distancing if you live in an area where there's people all around but we have no we don't have people so we can go outside thank thank goodness that's another another highlight is we can still go outside um, and then I'm just going to put a tiny, tiny coat of mascara on because it makes me feel good. Makes me feel like I have my life together when I don't. And I'm just going to do light. So when I do a light mascara, I just sort of like blink and see. 
Makes you feel good. Do what makes you feel good right now, girls. Gotta do it. And I just want to say, you know, my heart goes out to everybody, whether, you know, I know this is an adjustment for everyone. I kind of feel like I identify myself with both a stay-at-home mom. Never gone out in days with season. <laughs> Nikki, you got to get outside. I told you the story about when I had the quince and I hadn't gone outside and I took the trash out and I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't been outside in two weeks. You got to go outside even when it's cold and breathe in the fresh air. Um, can somebody remind me what I was just saying? Because my attention span is terrible. What were we talking about? Oh my goodness. My mascara, going outside. I don't exercise, but I've been trying to go outside. Oh, I, I identify myself as both a pretty much a stay-at-home mom because I don't work a ton and when I do work um, for right now I'm going in in the evening so I feel like I spend the majority of I'm the one that's with my kids the majority of the day so my heart goes out to everyone right now whether you're a stay-at-home mom and now we're really at home because I know it's you know when even when you have kids that are little or in preschool or a mix of grade school and whatever um, you still get you know that you still have a schedule and now that everybody's home and going nowhere i know that that sort of changes your stay-at-home mom routine my heart goes out to the people who have either lost their jobs or been laid off from their jobs um, because i know that is it's certainly uncertain times and that's very scary and then my heart also goes out to all of my um, co-workers and all of my medical worker friends and even if you're not medical if you're someone that works in a hospital um, I know Nikki's husband does the maintenance like we in our dietary people and everybody that um, make the hospital a better place I'm thankful for that um, and my heart goes out to everybody right now so I just thought I'd pop in and say hello because it's been a while I promise I won't um, be this quiet I'm so thankful for the ladies that have gotten on and shared so I know Holly Holly thank you for hopping on and sharing some of your great ideas this week um, I loved the the chalk thing and you had that kind of that fun maze thing with the uh, you could either use paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls um, I thought that was really awesome I I know I've noticed some other people share some things um, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna make a post after this to kind of share. I talked about uh, Sarah Bear. She has a Facebook page and a website. It's called The Bear Necessities. I uh, I think it's such a cute spin on her last name. But she has some great ideas. Um, her her sort of like her vibe is she's kind of a minimalist um, slash organizer. And she did a really really good talk the other night about food. Um, and like kind of making your food last longer using what you have in your pantry and so I want to share that because I think that that was a really good one um, and if anybody else has any other things that they want to share I'm sure everyone is aware of this one but I'll tell you one thing that also we've sort of kept on our schedule this week is the Cincinnati Zoo does that spot animal spotlight every day at three o'clock and my kids look forward to that because they know like oh at three o'clock we get a snack and we sit down together and um, mom has like her eighth cup of coffee at that time and we watch the animals so just finding things that kind of give you a routine and give you something to do Kristen we did a reward chart for their chores and oh my gosh that is such a good idea yes we've sort of done the same we don't normal like I don't have enough tablets and stuff for all of our kids to use so I feel like my oldest, my 14-year-old abuses screen time big time, and I'm always have to be after him, but my younger ones don't usually get a lot of screen time because we don't have enough screens for them to have on, but we have made some big exceptions this week, and I have been rewarding them with that, and they've really appreciated that. Like, if we do these things, or we, you know, go make your bed, do this, we do our reading, we've done some, like, math facts and stuff like that, um, then after the zoo, is free time and that's one of their options is some screen time so I love that you did that with a reward chart that's really that's a cute idea I love it um, so anyway I wanted to say hello I'm not gonna stay on much longer I didn't even really feel like I meant to stay on this long but I just wanted to check in on everybody I wanted to share my experience of when I have felt stuck before when I have physically been stuck before and that um, I know that we will get through this and just do do what makes you happy do what makes your mind happy because I am a 
firm believer about mind over matter. And I really, really try to focus on um, I'm not like phony focus on positive. I mean, I am a realist. I know that this is, uh, we're in sort of like uncharted territory right now. This is a very unsettling and scary time, but I do try to focus on the positive because even in the worst of the worst, you can find something to be thankful for or something to like look forward to. Um, I feel like when the kids were born and we were basically told that, um, that, they, they probably wouldn't make it. I feel like you have to cling on to hope to get you through and um, just take one day at a time. And sometimes you have you can't even take one day at a time. You need to take like chunks. It's like, if I can just make it till lunchtime. Okay, if I can just make it till afternoon nap time or snack time or dinner time and then kind of like bedtime, like we'll get through it. We will. And, we, and I think the best thing is just coming together and getting through it together. So... Um, I'll check back in with you sometime this week. I hope that all of you feel free to share ideas or things that you're doing or just something inspirational or positive on this page. That's what we're all about. If you have any friends you think could benefit from joining our group, that's what we're here for. The more the merrier. If you think they'd like time-saving tips, a little bit of positivity in their life, money-saving tips, um, quick and easy, fashion and beauty stuff, um, invite them. I can hear my kids. I'm going to go. Okay, guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Nikki, get outside and get some fresh air. You need to get outside. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.